Valentine's. How is everybody? Um, I wanted to kind of get back to basics. I kind of felt like maybe I was complicating my pouring mediums a little bit and um, I just felt like I wanted to get back to basics. I don't can't say it any simpler than that. So um, I decided to take the Shelly um, the Shelly R. Bloom course um, it was so immensely helpful. I've really got so much out of it and I tried to do a couple things from it. Um, this, you know, obviously I'm new with doing a lot of this and my videos, of course, you can tell, but I'm doing the best I can in it and it's advancing. Every time I do something different, I learn something new. So I'm going to mix up my pouring medium with you today and a couple of different types of paints and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so the, the bottom line is I'm keeping it simple. It's just going to be a two-step or two-ingredient um, uh, pouring medium. The first thing is that it, you need to get base C paint, um, one that is it's untinted. When you purchase it, you have to make sure you tell someone at the counter or if you pick it up, you don't want it tinted. If you get it if you order it online and, and go to pick it up, you, you have to make sure you tell them you do not want it tinted. Um, this is a base C. So this one is um, Sher Sher Sherwin Williams Interior Summer Gloss. And you can see on the bottom, see on the bottom there, it says base C. And it should say untinted. Made, this one says made to be tinted. So that's one sample. And another sample I have, because I've used both, is the Valspar, same thing, Valspar Ultra um, Semi-Gloss Interior. And on the bottom there, you can see it says Base C. I think Bear has a really good one too. Um, for some reason, I've had a hard time getting a hold of it. So I've chosen to use uh, either one of these. When you open it, you'll notice that it's not going to be full. There's probably about maybe two inches of space that's left. And that's how you know you've gotten the untinted versus the tinted. When it's tinted, it will be full. That space is there and available for um, when you bring it to the counter and you want to make create a color out of it. That space is for the color that gets added, the additive, um, and that gets mixed up. So pretty much it's just a very creamy off-white type of cons uh, color, but very creamy consistency. Runs right off. I mean, they're both pretty much the same. So either one you get, uh, depending upon where you are, whichever is the easiest. I think this one has a clearer tint to it. So I'm gonna use this one today. I actually have a batch that I've made up of the other one. So I'm gonna put this one away. And then what you need to do is do yourself a favor when you're gonna close these, you've gotta make sure you've got something over to protect it because when you've used it, uh, you know, you're gonna get some crud on it. And then when you do this to get the top secure, pretty much it might splash out. Okay, so we're done with this one. The other product um, that is used in this um, particular pouring medium is the Minwax One Coat Triple Thick Polyurethane. And this is the greatest stuff in the world. So the combination is going to be, um, and I'll show you the consistency of this. This is clearer. Um, the way it dries is beautiful though. You can see. Um, it's going to be one part triple thick polyurethane to three parts of the base C. So I'm going to mix it up in my little container here and I'll get this out of the way so you can see. So I'm gonna do three parts of the base C paint. So I'm gonna probably do three cups. I think this holds 32 ounces, so get this out of the way. Um, and also when you get it, uh, tell them at the counter that you don't want them to shake it. Obviously, it's going to give you more bubbles. So, I'm going to do three cups. I hope you can see everything here. I'm going to move that out of the way.
I mean, if, if you're off by, you know, an ounce, it's not going to make much of a difference. It's pretty much what, as long as you stick close enough to it. Two cups. You know, and I know some people do this, um, they, you know, make small portions at a time as they mix their paints, but I'm going to mix up a couple of paints and probably use a lot of it in the next day or two. So I don't mind mixing up 32 ounces. All right, my last cup. I'm going to clean off my top. Try not to make too much of a mess. And that's the last cup of the BC. So now I'm going to add the one cup of the triple thick polyurethane. And then I'm going to just give it a nice stir. And you'll see the consistency. I'm actually at the end of this. I might have to get some more. All right. Just need it. Too much of a mess and then I'll give it a little bit of a stir make sure that all the ingredients are mixed up well hopefully you can see everything it's like everything else stir 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 <laughs> seems to be what we do a lot of I'll speed this up in the video so you don't have to watch me stir. Scrape your sides. Scrape the bottom. Make sure you're getting everything all incorporated. And this is pretty much, look at that beautiful consistency. It just runs right off the stick. Makes a little bit of a mound. Bring it up closer so you can see it. Beautiful. It makes the best pouring medium, you know. Um, I guess if you want to add, don't add Floetrol to this. Just use your Floetrol in your, um, you know, in your cell activator. I, that's more than enough. I was adding Floetrol and I was adding Liquitex and I was adding GAC. And um, if you want to add a squirt of Liquitex and a squirt of GAC so that you're, you know, you've got a good flow. And I mean, definitely GAC because it does protect your... GAC 800 protects your painting from getting too dried out, um, you know, and getting cracking and crazing. And so it is a good product to, to add into um, your pouring medium. But I'm going to just keep it simple right now. And now I'm going to mix up a couple of different paints just so that you can get a sample and see of what it's like to mix the paints in there. Almost. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna cover these up and get them out of my way so I don't drop them. Again, like I said, put something over it when you're gonna close them because they will spray all over the place and I've done that and I've got paint everywhere or um, polyurethane everywhere. And make sure you take out, um, it, you know, when you open and close it, you do get the gunk around. You want to take the gunk around the top off so you're not um, getting gunk in your pouring medium and you're also not, uh, you know, you're able to close the top a lot easier. This one will definitely spread because I just poured it. I don't want to leave it open. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was closed. 
Alrighty, so we're gonna get going and we're gonna mix up some paints and I'm gonna show you what this is like when you mix up paints. Get this out of my way. Let's keep everything kind of clean and <laughs> organized because that's kind of usually when I when I spill something or knock something over. All right, so I'm gonna use these little cups. I'm gonna start with basically um, it's anywhere from a quarter to a half of these little cups. Pouring medium depends on how much you want to make. And that kind of will last you really a lot more than you think. It goes a long way, a lot longer, especially when you're you're using your paints wisely. So I'm gonna. This one is um, Josanya Aqua. It's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna show you. Basically, it's just gonna be like a squirt, and that should be more than enough. And as you're mixing, you're gonna realize and you're gonna see the consistency and the color. And actually, I could probably use a little more pouring medium in that, so I don't want it to be too thick. That's it. And the colors are so strong that sometimes you don't realize when you put the paint in that you really have a lot of color in there. Um, and this particular mix, what I've realized is that it doesn't really change your color much. Um, the one thing I did notice when using... Um, you know, adding the GAC and the Floetrol and all the other kind of stuff, my colors were lighter. They would get a little more pastel -y. Um, And that really isn't what you want. You want your color to be close to being as true as possible. And I feel like when using this pouring medium, it does that. So there you go. It's running right off the stick. That might be a touch, touch thick, but I'm not going to add any water or anything into it right at this point. Um, if I feel like it's gotten a little thicker when I'm ready to use the paint, I might just add just a couple drops of water just to thin it out. So that's the Josanya Aqua. And one of my cups. Right, we'll cover that so we don't knock it over. There you go. And I have these little labels that I get. Um, they're almost like bottle labels. And it comes with a little pen. Let's find the pen. I have a little white permanent marker pen, and I do try to label um, some of the things that I have, especially when I'm using different pouring mediums and, and different paints. All right, so that one's done. So I'm going to do my Deco Art 24 karat, 24K, I should say. Probably half of the little jar. I like to put my pouring medium in first and then my paint in after that because I feel that the paint doesn't stick to the bottom of the um, cup as much. My chop those words and sentences because I'm like in deep thought. <laughs> All right. Mix, mix, stir, stir. sides and obviously your bottom I do it like I'm beating an egg I find that it really does stir things well up that way and there you go it's just coming off the stick you and you see the color it's just retains the color so well when using this pouring medium and this is so easy. I mean, it just really has simplified things for me. I don't feel like I'm, you know, trying to add too many things into the mix and it's keeping it a little simple. At least for me, it does. I mean, everybody's different. Okay, so that one's done. What I wanted to do next is I'm going to do a Liquitex. I'm trying to do some different style, different company paints so we can see how it looks with each one. Okay, so the liquid text. Again, just a little squirt. I don't know if 
I want a little more than that, but we'll see. I'll mix that up. Look at that. Oh my God, that color is gorgeous. This is the Liquitex uh, Dioxazine Purple. And you saw the way it came out. It has that nice, deep, rich purple color. Let me get this a little bit more mixed. Get my sides, my bottom. And there you have it. Dioxazine purple and the color is so close to what it was when it came out. Gorgeous. Some of the colors what I like to do is add a little bit of ink. Um, this is acrylic ink. There are different brand name companies you can get. Um, I think, I don't know, maybe Artsloft or Amsterdam has ink. Um, there's a couple of different companies that have ink. And make sure you get acrylic ink, not alcohol ink. Alcohol ink is really more for, you can do alcohol ink, but there's a style and a way to do it. Um, but you can add maybe a couple of drops. Whoops. That was a little stuck. What happened there? And then mix that in. And it just, sometimes it just really brightens up the colors and deepens them. I'll do a painting with this and you can get to see what it looks like. But you got to make sure you're getting out, um, acrylic, not alcohol ink. And it's is a little bit deeper now. It's got a little bit of a richer color. Doesn't change the consistency. Keeps everything the same. So I just wanted to show you a sample of using ink. All right. That one's done. Look at this. Look at these split. One, two, three. It's just so much easier. Um, all right. So the next thing I wanted to do, I'm going to do a golden. We'll try that. Now, I find Golden's pigments are very strong, so I tend to not need as much. I always leave a little bit of extra space, too, um, just in case um, it does get a little thick and you want to add water, you've got the availability to do so. Squirt. Let's see how that looks. And if you really feel you need it, you can always add. Look at that. It's so... So much color, so dense. And if you see, it actually does look like the color that came out of the bottle. This does not change the color when you use this type of pouring medium. You have nothing in there that has any kind of tint. Probably get just a squirt more of this. And still the same color hasn't changed really get your sides get your bottom make sure everything's mixed well and there you go so this one is the golden blue teal blue lagoon that's what that one is there you go all righty that one's done. Now I want to do a pigment. Actually, I could even um, pull out uh, mica and do one of those, but I really do like these, so we'll do these. This one is Primary Elements Persimmon. So we're going to use that for Primary Elements. Um, art Pigments. And this is uh, persimmon, if you could read it there. Beautiful color. Now you see, I've already used probably a quarter of what I've mixed up just by mixing these, this bunch of paints. And I don't measure, I don't measure my pigments on my paints. I just kind of put in to what the way I want the color to look. Um, I probably should have put the pigment in first because it, they fly. So I'm just going to put a couple little scoops in. I, I usually use my little spoon and I should have that comes with it, which is this little spoon comes with this and it's a lot easier. So you do basically, basically you do like a large scoop or a scoop and a quarter, depending upon the color you want. 
this you want to you want to incorporate slowly because it's pigment powder pigment and it will fly um, and you don't want to breathe that in and I know they um, they say to use a mask or a respirator when doing and mixing pigments and micas um, but if you do a little slow incorporation first you should be okay as long as you don't like just start mixing right away um, and then the pigments fly up in the air and there you go it's all mixed and incorporated and now I'm just gonna make sure everything's mixed together my pouring medium my size my bottom and there you go persimmon primary elements beautiful I love all the primary elements um, I even have uh, the primary elements for resin and the blingets and you've got to discover some of those the pigments are just gorgeous they really retain their color it looks like you're not getting a lot um, in a jar but you really are getting a lot okay so next up I'm going to do this little piggy so this little piggy this is going to be I'm making a mess over here um, this little piggy and the color is asparagus get to see it and that's a beautiful color I was dripping off my thing there again here you go this is also a pigment a powdered pigment I'll use my spoon from primary elements and basically just like a heaping scoop and it doesn't even seem like you took anything out of there really I mean no it does look like it but it really isn't and it goes a long way way longer than everybody thinks um, you know when you start using it you kind of think oh my god that's not gonna last me that long and it really lasts you a lot longer than you think so again with any pigments you just want to incorporate the pigment is slowly it's a powdered pigment actually that was probably a much bigger scoop than I needed so I'm going to incorporate this slowly till I think that the powder has been covered. You know, I made a video earlier um, and I kind of did pull this from another artist that I saw. I think it's uh, Mina Villagras and um, I love her work. She uses a little bit of alcohol when she mixes the pigments first um, just to kind of wet them. And I tried that, um, but I wasn't really thrilled with the way I think it kind of thinned everything out for me. So to each his own, uh, you have to find what works for you. And I've, I've tried that um, and it's okay. It, it does work, um, but I really like this. This is keeping things simple for me and I kind of needed to go back to simple. So now there you go. There's that color, asparagus. That could be a touch thick. It needs to be mixed a little bit better. Um, that might need a little touch of water. Actually, I should add a little more pouring medium in there because I gave it a pretty decent scoop. That might thin that out just a bit more. Probably a bigger scoop than it needed. And I'm going to show you the color and how it just stays in this pouring medium. That's a little bit better. See, there you go. That's kind of what you want. That running off the stick leaves a little mound on a mound that goes down beautiful and this is really this that I'm doing now with the colors um, is in the best consistency for the bloom recipe um, I took the Shelly art course I think I mentioned that when we first started and I'm just gonna show you the color to the color and there it goes it's like it hasn't changed um, and I know a lot of uh, videos I've seen a lot of artists on YouTube and uh, that have taken the course have mentioned they loved it um, you know they think they suggest that people take it and sometimes you just hear that and you're like oh yeah you know they're just trying to promote the course but I have to be honest with you I loved it I loved it I felt like I said it just just basic the two ingredient recipe um, it's just for the bloom um, of course for other recipes you can add and change things as you need Dutch pour obviously is paint and water and I'll do something different with that when I'm ready to do Dutch pour but for the bloom and, and really for a lot of other stuff, this recipe you could use for 
not only the bloom, but you can do flip cups and, and dirty pours and, you know, a lot of, the, of other types of pours where you want a little bit thicker consistency in your paint. So I'm just going to do one more. I don't want this video to be super, super long, um, but I did want to give you like a couple of sample different types of paints that I used for this. Just so you can get an idea of the different paints. This is a Bling It color. Now, Bling It, I know you can use in resin and in acrylics. Um, this one is doo -doo -doo, uh, Gold Sparkle. There you go. Gold Sparkle. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in there. I'm going to use my little spoon. Probably should get that green off. Asparagus. And I will use a heapy teaspoon for that. And look at that. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing. So let me cover that before I drop that all over the floor. All right, and we'll just, like I said, incorporate, especially to bling it. Um, bling it's tend to have sparkle and mica and other stuff in there that will fly. And not only, you don't want to breathe it in, first of all, but you also don't want it all over the place. I mean, it's just like having, you know, when you have kids and you, they sit there and they're working with glitter and now there's glitter all over your, your wood floor and you vacuum and vacuum and vacuum and, you know, months later you're still finding glitter on your wood floor. So you want to be careful with that. All right, that's that. It's gold. Sparkle. I'll mix this up a little bit more. I think it needs a little bit more mixing. To make sure I'm getting everything incorporated on my sides and my bottom, just like everything else. There you go. I think I saw it just look like it might have been a little bit thick. So just a touch more or in medium. Get off. There you go. That's pretty much enough. Still, the color is just still amazing and in a painting you're gonna see this is gonna just have so much sparkle and bling much better there you go as you can see that I'm running right off the stick all right I don't know if there's any others I can show you um, what else do I have I could do a heavyo um, Heavyo Metallics, and which color is this one? Iridescent Copper. All right, so we'll just do this one more, and then that'll be it, and then I'll, I'll stop the video. I don't want this to be too long and drawn out. I mean, you know, you do kind of lose um, attention after a while. I mean, I know I'm a little bit ADD, so I usually jump around. There you go. I had to squirt probably more than I, sh I needed. Let me wipe this off so I'm not incorporating bling it. Yeah, it's going to need a little more pouring medium. This is another thing that you're going to learn, um, or that I have learned. As you're stirring and you're putting your pouring medium and your, your paint together, you're feeling your consistency. You're, you're feeling how it feels to you. I know that this feels way too thick for me. Blah, blah, blah. So you, can you see that? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna hit, and I did realize that when I was putting the paint in, I probably was adding more paint than um, pouring medium. And this is just a feel. This is just how you're going to learn your style, learn what works for you, what, how it feels for you. Um, and then when you use it in a painting, does it, does it work after you felt like you've gotten the consistency correct? Do you want it to be a little thinner or a little thicker? I mean, this is all stuff that you're going to you're gonna do and incorporate on your own. So there you go. Running off the stick better. And there you go. So there was my bunch of different paints. Um, sorry, I meant to show you. The Pebeo um, Iridescent Copper. Pebeo is beautiful iridescence. Um, I like a lot of their paints. Um, I, got, I guess obviously the ones that I've mixed up today are somewhat of my favorites, uh, favorite brands. Um, like I said, again, you're gonna, you're gonna find what works for you um, and then work with it. So that's it, I mixed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paints. I used half of my pouring medium and those eight paints would, will last me for a while. All right guys, 
Happy painting. Thanks. Enjoy your day.